videos that are ultimately going to talk about adding color to a monochrome astronomy image. And then in the fifth video, which would be the next one, we'll talk about blending colors with multiple filters, for instance, hydrogen and oxygen. So if you've been following along, we talked about the Photoshop interface, the structure of an image, some of the Photoshop details, and now we're getting into really the different techniques for adding color to a monochrome image. If you're already familiar with Photoshop, this is a good starting point. If you're not familiar with Photoshop, you might want to go back and review the first three videos. So let's look at a monochrome image. And this is one that we looked at in one of the early examples. But in this case, I have it in a file where I've already done more work to it. But we'll start with the bottom of the layer stack. And what we're looking at here is the hydrogen alpha data of the Rosette Nebula. And because this was taken with a monochrome camera, there's no color information. It's just a simple black and white image. Uh, it's no longer grayscale. I did convert it. If you remember the image mode, this was converted to, from grayscale, which is how it started, to an RGB color image so that I have the three color channels to work with. And it's also a 16-bit image so that I have lots of, of potential detail uh, lots of gradations between black and white so that I minimize the problems of banding. So with that, let's talk about how to add color. That We know because this is a color RGB image, we know I have a red, a green, and a blue channel. And because they're all the same, the final image appears in grayscale. And what I see a lot of people do in the videos on YouTube is jump through a lot of different gyrations of copying and pasting from one image to another so that they would, for instance, copy this image, go to the channels palette, paste it in as the red channel, and then maybe go to the, to the green channel and paste something else in, go to the blue channel and paste something else in. And that's a very destructive way of working, that once you've pasted it in, Typically, then they have color balance issues that they have to add further adjustments to try to correct those things, but yet they've already changed the underlying pixels. So you, you run the risk uh, pretty substantially of creating problems that you then have to try to fix later with other destructive edits. And so I'm not going to do that. that. There are probably times when you do need to paste something into a channel, but they're pretty rare. And I would say for the most part, and if you're thinking about pasting uh, something into a channel, there are better ways to do it. So let's go back to our layer stack. And for the most part, we're not going to spend any time in the channels palette. But we are going to be working with the concept of channels because the channels are still useful to us. We just don't want to actively change the pixels on those channels. So an easy way to do it. If I look at this layer, layers have the opportunity of having layer styles. And I can get to the layer styles a number of different ways, but if I just double click outside of the name in this gray area, it will bring up the layer style dialog. And we can do things like add drop shadows and strokes and different graphic effects. But a couple of the things that we will use pretty regularly is, first of all, we can affect what channels are going to be blended. So if I want just the red channel, because this is hydrogen data, I can just turn off the green and blue. And without adding any real file size, I now have red rather than a grayscale or a monochrome image. I guess technically it's still monochrome because it's just one color. If I wanted this to be cyan, I could click the green and the blue and have cyan color. So that's a real easy way to just turn off two of the colors and effect setting black. In this case, I'd be setting the red channel to all zeros. Or if I want hydrogen alpha to appear as red, I can turn off the green and blue. And I have a red image just that easy. And I just clicked Cancel to undo that change. If instead, if I bring this back up, Let's turn off the green and the blue. I'll click OK. Notice we now have this little 
double circle symbol over here and that shows me the layer style and if I double click on it to bring the layer style back up we can see that my change there has been remembered even though no pixels has, have been changed. If I save this as a Photoshop layered Photoshop file or as a layered TIFF file again those settings are preserved rather than pixel values. So the pixel values of the underlying layer have never been changed. All I'm changing is our way of looking at it. So that's an easy way to introduce color into a monochrome image. So let's undo this. So I'll go ahead and turn green and blue back on. Another easy way to introduce color is with the channel mixer. And that's right here in the adjustment layers. What it lets me do is change how each channel as an input is affected on the output. So for instance if I go to the red channel we can see that the red channel is just being mixed as 100% red. If I go to the green channel the green channel is using 100% of the green channel none of the red and blue. But if I want less green I can turn the green down and now we get magenta which because that's because we have blue and red. If I go to the blue channel the blue channel again starts out as being 100% blue. I can turn the blue channel down and I can even go negative if I wanted to. Uh, so now we're back to just having a red image instead of using a layer style. In this case we've used a channel mixer. Advantages are again it's non-destructive that these values of the of the tool of the filter are, are saved rather than changing pixels and if I want to change the color balance, I can play with, for instance, I can add some green, I can add a little bit of blue, I can change the, the, the color of the red just by changing how the different channels are ultimately mixed and displayed. So that can be a useful tool. And let me just delete this. Another way of adding color that doesn't tinker with the pixels is with a hue saturation layer and that shows up right here in the adjustment palette and in order to use this with a monochrome image we'll want to click the colorize box and once I click colorize I can change the hue that I want displayed I can, and I can also change the saturation so again if we just want a saturated red image I can get it here I can also change brightness so this can be a good way to add color to a monochrome layer. Now we're kind of coming to my favorites. And the one that I ones I really use the most, the first one is a simple curves adjustment. And this is the the curves adjustment icon. When I click on that, it opens up the it adds a curve and a mask. And just like we were able to use the, the layer style to turn off different, different channels, we can do the same thing with more precision with a curve. The drop down here by default, we're changing the curve for the composite of the RGB. And if I just drag that point off the curve, it deletes it. But I can also choose to affect just the red channel, just the green channel, or just the blue channel. So if I go, for instance, to the green channel, grab this side of the curve and drag it down to zero, I've now taken all the green out of the image. I can go to the blue curve, take all the blue out of the image, and voila, we have our red hydrogen alpha layer with a simple curve. Again, if I don't like that color, if I wanted to put a little bit of green in, I can go back to the green curve and depending on where I add it, if I add it in the middle or if I just bring some in here to make this a little bit more orangey, I can tweak the color. It's all non-destructive. No pixels have been changed. It's just the appearance of the pixels when we look through <coughs> this adjustment to the underlying pixels. So that's probably my second favorite way of adding color. 
My favorite, and probably the most powerful, is to add a gradient fill layer. And if we, as a way to think about this, let's just add a layer and let's choose red as a foreground color and then I'll fill this layer with red. If I change the blending mode to darken, this gives me basically the same effect that I'm using this red color to darken the monochrome image underneath and creating that red image. That's kind of a cumbersome way to do it uh, and because we have pixels here we've added pixels to the file. Uh, it also becomes harder to change this color. So we, we like that principle. We don't like doing it this way. So let's get rid of this layer and instead let's add just a solid color layer. Again I'll make this darken. The advantage now is that this is an it's like an adjustment layer but it's a solid color layer. And if I double click on the layer icon I can change my mind about the color. The, I can change it to green, I could change it to cyan or blue, I can change the brightness so I have lots of options to change how this is going to affect the color of the image. So let's take that principle one step further. What if we don't want just one color? What if we want to differentiate brightness and color at the same time? Well, the tool to do that, and this is probably the most powerful way of adding color to an image, is with the gradient fill layer, which is the last icon in the adjustments palette and it will come up with one of the presets uh, and whatever you have selected as a foreground and a background. And when I click on the gradient, let me go back here funny, when I click on this it will bring up this dialog that lets me choose do I want black to white or some of these different preset colors. What it's doing is it's going to apply this gradient, in this case going from black to white, to the underlying image based on its tone values. So black would be applied to black, white would be applied to white in this case. But if we want to apply color, I can click over here to select this marker, click on the color preview to bring up the color picker, and let's go to red. Click OK. Now we have just a gradient going from black to red and again when I click OK it saves the settings it doesn't change any pixels so I can always come back click on this and change this if I wanted to change from red to green or cyan it gives me lots of options to change my mind and fine-tune it as I move through the workflow. The other thing where this gets really powerful let's go back to red we might want to introduce multiple colors. So for instance I might introduce, let me go back to white at this end and let's go kind of in the middle and let's add kind of a deep red. So now we've added red in the midtones, we still have white in the highlights and I can move this back and forth to fine-tune where it's applied and how it's applied. If I want to put some more color into the highlights I can just click to add another color point, click on the color swatch and choose a different color and let's say we want to add some some orange or yellow because yellow will be a much brighter color than red. Generally saturated red is dark, uh, saturated yellow is going to be bright. So by going to an orange or yellow type color, that's going to show more detail in some of these bright areas. <clears throat> We're also getting a fair amount of red in the uh, background. So I can come down here to the dark end and let's just pull up the color swatch and let's just add kind of a neutral, very dark gray. And again, I can change where I apply this. 
but that can that will take out a lot of that background color and I can fine-tune this to make the the red yellow or brighter or darker the yellow brighter or darker click OK to save that and I've added a lot of color to this image without ever manipulating channels I haven't manipulated any pixels all I've done is add a an adjustment layer that we're looking through I can turn it on and off by clicking on the eyeball and again when I save this image and come back to it those settings are going to be there just as they are I can always come back and change my mind today tomorrow next week next month and so forth so this is by far the most powerful way to add colors to a monochrome image in the next video we'll continue working with this file and we'll explore how to add color and then blend both the hydrogen and the oxygen data to create a finished image.